This is the time of year when we're all vulnerable to coughs and colds. I've got one right now, you might be able to hear it. So I've spent some time doing the research into the best advice to how to prevent them in the first place, but mainly what to do when you have one or you think you might have one coming on. This isn't specifically for older athletes, but it can hit us harder. Doubt is difficult to handle. Are you brewing an upper respiratory tract infection? If you track your heart rate variability or your resting heart rate and notice a change, that can be an early warning. So should you do that ride, that run, that gym session? The answer is no. If you're in any doubt, do not do it. Look at it this way. You're not missing a training session. You're potentially saving your summer because if that session diverted the energy away from your immune system that's fighting off a cold, then you could end up with something like a chest infection that lasts for weeks, and that really could ruin your training. I'll put in the video description the uh, medical papers and scientific research from which I'm drawing this advice. But there are two things that you really ought to be doing straight away. The first is monitor your symptoms so you know whether it's a cold or influenza, which is a lot more serious. And if it's a cold, squirt some of this up your nose. Vicks First Defense, or in the UK, Boots own brand Dual Defense. They really do work if you catch a cold in the first 36 hours. They make the nose slightly acidic, which knocks out the virus before it can take hold and zinc lozenges can also help if taken within 24 hours. I use all of this every time I travel by air. But colds and coughs happen, so what then? We all know not to train if it's below the neck, but who can train properly with a blocked nose? Just don't push yourself. Stay away from the turbo or bike or anything that prompts you to push yourself harder. Adjust your expectations. I aim to walk an hour a day, always in warm clothing, paying particular attention to my neck and head. And I drink loads of water. You should pee every one to two hours. This replaces my usual training. Paracetamol and ibuprofen can be used together for pain relief and they help bring down any temperature. Zinc with vitamin C is recommended, but I eat loads of fruit and veg anyway. I keep my protein up and I reduce my carbs, but only slightly. Too low would harm my immune system. And I switch to decaf coffee, so I'm not artificially boosting my energy. I try to do a gentle yoga session every week, along with those daily walks to maintain flexibility and mobility. But I know the longer I can't train, my fitness is evaporating. In the first week, it's negligible, but by the end of the second week, less oxygen can be delivered to the muscles, so your VO2 max is suffering. Then significant detraining happens, again in VO2 max, heart rate recovery and FTP. By week four, the fitter you are, the more endurance you lose. You can also lose strength, but this can be topped up with minimal strength training. And unfortunately, I am now at week four. The NHS website says you should contact your GP if you haven't cleared your cough within three weeks. Uh, I waited until three weeks to make the phone call and didn't get an appointment until almost week four. So don't make that mistake. Uh, I now have a course of corticosteroids, which I hope will clear this up. If you race, then you should check with anti-doping whether you can take corticosteroids, uh, particularly if you are in competition when you take them. How do you know when it is time to start training again? Like most people, you will probably feel you are ready before you actually are. So the first session back has to be super easy and super short. We're talking bottom end of zone two, 20 to 30 minutes. Your body's natural fight or flight response will push you through it, especially if you're on the way to recovery. But two to three hours later, you'll know whether or not you're ready. If your temperature's gone off, if you're coughing or you feel dreadful, then you know you've gone too soon. And that is why it has to be super short and super easy, because if not, you can just dig yourself into another hole. It's one of the reasons I like walking, because I can just increase the pace for a little bit and then see how I feel when I get back. We know 
know most of the preventative techniques from COVID days. Don't share water bottles or cups and cutlery, even with loved ones. Consider supplementing with vitamin D and omega-3. Keep the first defense handy. Hand gel and hand washing, no handshaking. You'd rarely see a professional athlete on public transport in winter. It's too great a risk. If you have to, maybe wear a mask. But unless you can squirrel yourself away, in the real world with jobs, families and friends, a cold's going to creep through. And if you can't catch it with first defence, manage the symptoms and minimise their effects by not pushing yourself. In the video description, I'll put links to at least one of the papers that I've based this advice on. The one I'm thinking of uh, dealt with elite athletes, but I think we can extrapolate to the likes of us as well. Um, it has a really good infographic that I found exceptionally helpful. Um, if you've enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. You'll find more older athlete stories here, and you'll also find some adventure cycling here, which I hope to get back to soon. I think you might enjoy that in the meantime. Thank you for watching. See you again next time. Goodbye.